Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this overview, we're going to be looking at the recently revamped and re-energized Persians. Persians these days are comfortably a top-tier civilization, following some recent buffs that had a dramatic impact on both their 1v1 win and play rate on the ladder. Now while it's true that 1v1 stats are usually the standard when talking about balance, I should note they're actually performing the best right now in team games, and are especially crushing things on Michi, which really plays to all of their strengths. It's pretty good for a civilization that doesn't even have Bracer. Let's check them out. To start things off, their team bonus is that their knights have plus 2 attack against archers. The term archer here is used very loosely, including skirmishers, cavalry archers, hand cannoneers, and every variant of those you can think of. The effect of this can be quite profound, and in Castle Age for example, it means a Persian team's knights take out crossbows one attack sooner, with 3 instead of 4 hits. While that doesn't always help against massed crossbows that are one-shotting your knights, for cleaning up feudal archers or taking slightly better engagements, it's a handy bonus, especially in team games, where knight and crossbow meta is quite popular. Moving on to their civ bonuses, the first two I consider strongly linked together, creating a super economy package for Persians. First, they start with plus 50 wooden food, adding in a faster work rate on your town center and dock. A third effect here is you also have double HP on town centers and docks as well, and maybe the most infamous use of this is to delete your starting town center partway through Dark Age, and then rebuild it beside your opponent. Given Persians double HP, with similar villager numbers, your opponent's town center will always go down first without repairing, while it also means repairing your own town center is cheaper, since the cost is tied to the percent of HP repaired. It's a risky all-in strategy, but you can't talk about Persians without mentioning it. The faster work rate though is among the best booming bonuses in the game. In Dark Age, with a typical feudal advance time, you're usually up by one villager already from a 5% faster TC, absorbing your extra 50 starting food but leading into a dangerous scout rush, which is by far the most popular way to play Persians online. In Feudal Age and beyond, the bonus actually grows in its effect size, with a fast castle onto 3, 4, or even 5 town centers all getting that plus 15%, and this is when your villager count can really start to snowball. One thing I should note about this bonus though is that it doesn't mean you're going to have 15% more resources to work with in the mid game. In fact, you're usually not floating more resources than other civilizations, as remember you have to pay for those extra villagers and farms, and with villagers coming out 4 seconds faster, it's an unusually resource hungry boom. I've modeled this before and found in a pure booming situation, by 25 minutes you should be somewhere around 9 villagers ahead of your opponents, but once you factor in those villagers cost, you're only ahead of a generic civilization by about 150 resources. It's when you stop at that 130 villagers let's say, while your opponent has 110 and is still creating more, that this bonus really leads to a flood of resources. Keep in mind your advance times are also sped up, saving anywhere from 6 seconds going up to feudal, and your research time for wheelbarrow and town center etc are also slightly faster. Of course, a lot of this applies to the dock as well, giving them a better than average fish boom made even easier with some extra starting wood while also functioning as a bit of a naval military bonus, helping you mass ships faster than an opponent on the same number of docks, or get upgrades like War Galley just those couple of seconds earlier. Combined with the town center boost, this makes them a dangerous civilization on both hybrid and water maps. Moving on, their next bonus is a new one, and it's that Parthian Tactics is available in Castle Age. Not only does this help their attack against spear units, but the plus 2 armor means they take just 3 damage from crossbows instead of 5, leading to much better trades. There's an argument they're among the best Castle Age cavalry archers, though of course don't forget Persians are missing Bracer in Imperial Age. This ties in very nicely with their next civ bonus, which is that cavalry, including cavalry archers, generate 5 gold per enemy unit killed. 
an hour plus 1v1 game can easily get into the range of 500 or 700 units lost on both sides. And if even half of those are military units killed by Persian cavalry, whether it be the night line, camels, hussars, war elephants, or cavalry archers, we're talking on a scale of 1500 or more gold, comparable in total to having an extra relic for most of the game. Of course, this doesn't include any villager picks when raiding, but it's another completely passive bonus that just throws a few more resources at Persians for using units they were probably already going to make. Their final bonus then becomes another gold bonus, this time unlocking the Caravanserai. This building is only available to Hindustanis and Persians, and heals and speeds up passing trade cards by 20%, making them harder to raid and improving your gold income at the same time. This even works on allied trade cards as well. So if there's one drawback, it's that they cost 50 stone each, in addition to 175 wood. So covering a trade route on a 2v2 map puts you back about 400 stone, and covering the side of a 4v4 map would be nearly the stone cost of a castle, plus a lot of wood. The payoff is substantial though, and for a 4v4 game with, say, 40 trade cards per player, this could be worth for your team collectively 800 more gold per minute in theory. So it's generally worth doing if you can afford it. So that's the Persians' bonuses, and if there's one recurring theme so far, it's really that your economy is going to be very strong. Next though, you need to decide what to spend all those resources on, which is where their expensive unique units enter the scene. Let's take a look at those, starting with the War Elephant. These are of course the classic example of an expensive but very population efficient unit. Stats wise, you're getting over 3 times the HP of a Paladin, a third more damage when fully upgraded, and 50% trample damage to adjacent units. Of course, they cost over 250 resources each, with an elephant size emphasis on food, and the elite upgrade is also quite expensive. Keep in mind their tanky stats can be slightly misleading here, as they take a lot of extra bonus damage from spear units, scorpions, and a few anti-cavalry specialists, including Tatar's flaming camel. One hidden advantage to be aware of though is they actually deal a lot of bonus damage to buildings, between high melee attack, adding in plus 30 against all buildings, plus another 30 against what the game calls stone defenses, including walls, towers, and gates, but for some reason not castles. For comparison, a capped ram has 150 bonus versus buildings, so while the war elephant isn't quite on that level, it's still a nice bonus thrown in for an already strong unit. To give a bit of perspective, they are cost effective against Paladins, even outnumbered 2 to 1, not just ending with about 2 thirds of their HP left, but not even a single elephant goes down. Outnumbered 2 to 1 by Halberdiers, they actually still do okay, and even 3 to 1, they can still technically win. This isn't necessarily cost effective for the elephants, but stopping a large elephant army with Halberdiers takes longer than you might think, partly because trample damage is so effective against large numbers of low HP units. You might think their slow speed could then be exploited by archers, but it turns out they need over 3 times the number of arrows as a paladin, and almost 9 times a hazar. So again, while it works in theory and Genoese crossbows specifically do okay, in general archers are not as effective as you might think, even if they have bracer. Instead, it's monks best equipped to exploit the elephant's slow speed, and the only thing worse than losing your 250 resource elephant unit is immediately having to fight it after a conversion. As noted earlier, Persians aren't necessarily floating a lot of extra resources in the mid game, despite having more villagers, so war elephants are pretty rare in Castle Age, and I'd even say 1v1s in general. For team games like Black Forest or Michi though, where pop efficiency is king, they're reasonably common to see, and can be quite effective when paired with Bombard Cannons or Hazars to handle enemy monks in siege. Competing for your attention though is another Imperial Age unique unit, this time a Persian specific slightly modified reskin of the Paladin. This is what Persians upgrade their Cavaliers to, and it offers two major advantages and one disadvantage. The disadvantage is it has 15 less HP, and actually ends up being a little worse in some melee situations than the Paladin. It's not a massive difference by any means, but against Pikemen for example, they go down one hit sooner, though notably they beat Paladins one on one thanks to a slightly faster attack rate. On the flip side, their first advantage is they're a bit cheaper and even a little faster to upgrade than Paladin, so you hit that power spike sooner, making it also easier to upgrade while continuing to build up numbers. Its other main advantage is it's just all around better against archers. Not only does it have one more pierce armor, which has a pretty large percentage impact on their damage taken per arrow, but they also get an enhanced version of the Persian's team bonus, having not just plus 2, but a secret plus 5 against archers, which means they can take out arbalesters and elite skirmishers in 2 hits as opposed to 3. 
Despite having lower HP, it's clearly the better unit against anything ranged, or especially town centers, where they take just one instead of two damage per arrow, making even just a few of them very frustrating to clear out unless you have spear units or camels on hand. Now that slight extra weakness to pikemen and halberdiers sounds a little rough on paper, but Persians actually have a few good ways to deal with that. One way is with cavalry archers, another is hand cannoneers, or instead you could use their first unique tech, Commanderon. This swaps the crossbow's gold cost with extra wood, giving them the affectionate name Trash Bows. Persians are missing Bracer, don't forget, so they're not the best crossbows in the world, but with up to 8 attack plus 3 more unblockable damage to spears, they can do the job while conserving your gold. Typically, elite skirmishers play an anti-spear role for most civilizations, but even without Bracer, the crossbow has one more attack, so especially if there's champions or anything else with even modest pierce armor around, the crossbow feels significantly more well-rounded. The other Persian unique tech is citadels, giving various attack improvements including bonus damage to your castles, while also letting them take 25% less bonus damage from things like trebuchets and rams. Now something you may not have run into before is Captain Siege Rams add a bit of resistance to anti-ram bonus damage, with Siege Rams actually negating the Persians tech entirely. But against infantry, Persians deal almost double the damage after this tech, and about 50% more damage to any raiding hazards. Just remember, you're missing Bracer, so your castles are harder hitting, but a bit shorter range, and again totally generic against Siege Rams. On top of this, they also take 3 extra shots from trebuchets, thanks to taking less bonus damage. So that's the unique units and techs, which combine to give you the foundation of a powerful and generally cost efficient late game army. Persians actually have a pretty nice tech tree in general as well, and let's take a look at that now, starting with the archers. Opening with an early archery range or two is a very reasonable play, with fully upgraded crossbows, and as we saw, arguably among the best cavalry archers in Castle Age, thanks to plus two pierce armor. While you lack Bracer and Arbluster in Imperial, their crossbows can then have their gold costs removed, and arguably the Cavalry Archer are still viable in Imperial Age, given they generate gold, plus don't forget the Hand Cannoneer if you're getting overrun by Halberdiers. Yes, they lack Bracer, but there's enough here, I think it's still a solid B+. Moving on to Infantry, Persians somewhat randomly lack two-handed swordsmen, which is a funny combo with getting supplies and gambesins for some excellent long swords that go nowhere. Basically, the Halberdier is fine, and the Longsword technically still beats elite eagle warriors in the late game one-on-one, -on -one, though usually players avoid the Persian Swordsman line for obvious reasons. I'd say it's a C plus for infantry. Next up, for cavalry, you basically have a full tech tree, obviously missing a few regional units, but have camels, as well as their unique paladin replacement. Like I said earlier, the safest Persian play is to go scouts, and their knight and or camel spam is also quite solid. Late game, they have a ton of great options, to the point they're almost in a class of their own, with various good supporting units to handle cavalry counters as well. I'd say it's an A+, and they're at the moment quite possibly the best cavalry civilization, in my opinion. Moving on to Siege, the variety is surprisingly good for a cavalry civ, though unfortunately you're missing Siege Engineers. Losing that plus one range hurts, there's no way around it, and it's almost like you're missing Bracer on your Siege. At the same time, I'm actually tempted to mention the War Elephant here now, given all of its anti-building damage, plus the ability to tank a lot of arrow fire. Altogether, I'd say it's a B. Next up for the Navy, again, the tech tree is awesome, but keep in mind you're missing Bracer. Early game, you have double HP docks that work slightly faster, and you also start with a little extra wood for a very clean Dark Age as well. While there's no direct galley or fire galley bonus, I think there's still a very competitive A- on water early. Late game, you lack shipwright and that one range upgrade that you're probably sick of me saying, but still have the dock work rate bonus for faster creation. I'd say it slips to a solid but not amazing B on water, for a B plus overall. Taking a quick look at the monks, Persians actually have among the worst monasteries. Block printing without redemption is a bit of a troll, and in fact the tech you're probably most likely to get here is faith, as that can be handy for cavalry, albeit at a high cost. I'd say it's a C minus, but probably could be an F. Next up, for defenses, they have pretty brutal towers and also no fortified walls, with, of course, brace for it, yes, lacking bracer. Don't forget the double town center HP though, making them harder to push with Castle Age Siege, and their new Imperial Age unique tech, giving castles improved attack, albeit with a bit shorter range. The Caravan Strike could also be included here, as it helps resist raiding, so it's a mix of some advantages but also glaring holes. I'd say it averages out to a middling C+, with lacking fortified walls in particular being able to bite you on arena or black forest. 
And finally, for their trash units, that is, units that don't cost gold, again, they're just missing bracer on skirmishers and crossbows. I'd say that's more than made up for by having Hazards generate gold with each military unit killed, letting you sneak in the odd extra siege unit. Plus, of course, crossbows also factor in as a trash unit here, costing just wood and doing much better against things like champions than skirmishers. I like it enough for an A, and especially with the new gold generation, would be very happy to get into a trash war as Persians these days. So to give some final thoughts, there's no question the recent rework and overhaul has turned Persians into a powerhouse, especially in team games. Their extra starting resources and faster town center give them a strong start, with scouts or a fast castle being the most standard strategy, depending on the map. Their knight spam with a bonus against archers also makes them a top tier pocket in team games, arguably even the best choice at the moment once you factor in the Savar and Caravanserai. Their cavalry archers have also turned into a very intriguing option with their two new bonuses, and where lacking bracer is sometimes a kiss of death for cavalry archers, in this case it doesn't feel like it has to be a deal breaker. Combining their strong stable and archery range, they're definitely not a one-trick pony with the knight line, having several powerful late game units including gunpowder, with many good unit combinations depending on what you're up against. Everyone loves to have options after all, which was also a founding principle in my newest online side hustle, Spirit of the Wah, with over 500 unique guitar pedals that can be mixed and matched just like late game Persian units. It even has a great website thanks to this video's sponsor Squarespace. Where websites traditionally take a lot of technical knowledge to set up and maintain, Squarespace is a tool to help you create a professional looking site within minutes. If you're a blogger, own a small business, or chasing the passive income dream of opening an online store, but have no idea how to make a functional website from scratch, Squarespace has you covered with templates and tools to help you out, simplifying the website building process. Squarespace even has great third-party extensions to handle things like inventory, taxes, shipping, and scheduling to accommodate your specific needs. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash spirit of the law to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So hopefully that was a useful overview of the revamped Persians, and that like a good elephant, you'll never forget that Persians lack bracer. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.